Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Royal Chess. My name is Jan Marcos and this is my third video of the series of Carpo on Carpo's strategical play and um, we will today focus on the game between Carpo and Unziker from the 21st Olympiad in 1974. The game was played in Nice and usually uh, when chess coaches or textbooks you use this game, they use it as an example of the proper way how you should uh, fight for an open file, and they just pick up one interesting moment uh, in the game. But I have decided to do something different. I think that the main topic of this game, of the entire game, is uh, how to uh, play with uh, space advantage once um, the center is closed. So this is what we will focus um, on and uh, of course I will I will um, bring your attention to the uh, textbook um, moment of the game, but let's have a look at the entire game. So Karpov is white and Unziker is black. The game was played in the third round uh, when Soviet Union was playing Germany. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, Bishop b5, this is the Spanish game, and after a6, Bishop a4, Knight f6, castling Bishop b7, it was clear that uh, the closed Spanish or the so-called classical Spanish will be played, uh, which is, um, uh, and this opening is, is also sometimes called the high school of strategy, because there are so many plans and so many interesting uh, lessons to take away from this opening. So now white played rook e1. Already this is an interesting moment because white is covering the e4 pawn with the rook and not with the knight or the d pawn. The reason for that is that white wants to go c3 and d4 and a knight on c3 or a pawn on d3 would obstruct this plan. So white is quite happy that he was able to, to cover the e4 pawn with the rook. Black plays b5, bishop b3, d6. Once you see d6, you know that you don't have to be afraid of the martial attack. If black plays castles here, then uh, after c3 you, you have to count with the fact that he can go d5 and go for the fireworks in the martial attack and then you should be prepared. So after castling, uh, white players play a4, d3 or h3 in order to get some anti-martial plans. But still we are in the, in the, in the year 1974 and Ullmann definitely wasn't uh, the most tactical player in the world, so he played d6 and went for the strategical way of fight. White now went c3 and black castles. Um, now white is, seems to be prepared to go d4 immediately, but after d4 black would be able to pin uh, the knight with bishop g4 and get some additional uh, attack against the against the white center against white center. So white decided to go h3 and uh, to prophylactically uh, cover the g4 square and only then go d4. Now black got an additional tempo to do something interesting. The barrier line goes knight b8, which is a paradoxical move, but the knight goes to d7, and after bishop b7, black's pieces would be harmoniously placed. But the chiggering line, which uh, Unziker played, is also very good. Knight a5, white of course wants to keep the bishop pair, so bishop c2, and now black went c5, and after d4, uh, and after d4, black can go immediately knight c6, but he went queen c7 because sometimes in some lines he hopes that he will go to c4, so he covers the e5 uh, pawn with the queen. Now white went knight d2. And this basically is of course a very important tabia of, uh, of the um, Spanish game. It was 50 years ago and it's still now. Um, Black has many plans, some of them include to take uh, with the c pawn on d4 and then play along the c file. Uh, some include uh, knight c6 as was, as was played in the game. And now white sometimes takes on the e5 or, or, or takes on um, c5 and then tries to put something on d5 or to just to make use of the fact that there are two weak squares on f5 and d5. But Carpo decided to play d5 immediately and close the center, knight d8. And now we are having the situation which I was speaking about in the 
in in the uh, begin at the beginning of the video. Basically, now white is having a space advantage because of the d5 pawn. And how should he use this? Basically, if white was playing only on the queen side, black would be able to put all his pieces there and just uh, get an equal game. If white was playing on, only on the queen, king side, black would also be able to get his pieces there. So the thing is that you should combine the attack on the king side and on the queen side and use the uh, higher mobility of your pieces um, once you attack here and the second time you attack here then and you can transfer your pieces from one side to another very quickly then you have a chance that at some point you will get the decisive advantage uh, on one side or on the other, other other side it's basically the same as with tennis players you should uh, if you just was were playing only uh, on the forehand of your opponent he would just stand there and and wait for the next ball but uh, once you are playing on forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, then he needs to run. And if you are you're able to run better than him, uh, you will probably get the point. So um, this is probably this, this is basically the same strategy. So White started with the play on the queen side. He went a4. Now b4 is not very attractive because the c4 square. Uh, would be very nice for the d2 knight. So black uh, just went rook b8, covering the b5 pawn. Now white took, and for the moment he's the he's the ruler of the a file. But that's this might change very quickly if black uh, gets some time to develop his pieces and to return to the a file. So white uh, needs to put some pressure on his opponent's uh, position, and he went b4. Now, very important thing or strategical rule about this position is that once you take, take, then these uh, two pawns seem to be equally strong and equally weak, but in fact, black's pawn is considerably weaker. And why is it? Why is this? It's because of this uh, central pawn structure, where white is having a space advantage, and um, which means that white is has much more squares where he can maneuver and uh, try to attack the b5 pawn and protect the b4 pawn. So basically uh, the normal scenario which would uh, probably follow after c takes b4 is that white would attack the b5 pawn and take it sooner or later or penetrate via the queen side. So if you have a single pawn on a, on a flank and you want to decide whether your pawn is better or worse, you should have a look uh, at the center, not at the flank, and you will see whether your pawn structure in the center is better. If your pawn structure is better in the center, then also your pawn is stronger. So after b4, Unziker went knight b7, trying to hold his uh, queen side intact. White went knight f1, because he is really thinking also about the play on the king side, so he wants to put his knight to g3. Knight d7, and now bishop b3, rook a8, queen d2, connecting the rooks. And please note that this knight is a very poor piece. Um, it not only has nowhere to go, uh, it also obstructs um, black's heavy pieces, uh, so that black cannot really oppose uh, on, the, on the a file. If there was a queen on b7 instead of the knight, then black could... Um, successfully fight for the a-file. But the knight on b7 is a very very poor piece and also coaches uh, coaches uh, quite often say that uh, knights like uh, closed structures. Well unfortunately it's not the case here. Um, uh, knights like knights like closed structures once they have some nice square uh, in front of their own pawns but once they are if they are like clo closed in such a cage as this b7 knight, they really hate closed structures. So the, the knight on b7 is a very poor piece. Now black went rook fc8, trying to imitate some counterplay along the c file. White went bishop d3, because c takes b4 was a semi threat, let's say. Um, g6, knight g3, bishop f8. And now white went rook a2. This is an interesting moment where uh, 
it clearly shows how White's uh, space advantage in the center helps him to play on the flank. Simply, uh, he has two uh, rows uh, available to uh, maneuver with his heavy pieces, whereas Black has only got one row, which means that after, for example, Queen d8, Rook a1, Black cannot really successfully oppose on the a file. So Black decided to play c4 here, which is a move which uh, slows down White's initiative on the queen side because White wasn't able to go bishop c2, he had to go bishop b1. But on the other hand, it gives this important diagonal to White and um, it makes uh, very difficult for Black to find any uh, sensible counterplay. He was trying to play along the c file, but once he has closed it, then um, he probably will need to sit and wait, and that's that's all. Now Black went king, queen d8, trying to oppose on the a file, and this is the textbook moment of the game, where White uh, played a very nice move uh, in order to get the advantage. Uh, along the a file. He went bishop a7, sorry, bishop a7, and the idea is that this bishop on a7 will, um, will for a while, uh, serve as a cork. Now black cannot really exchange uh, a pair of rooks and cannot really uh, get uh, he, he, another um, heavy pieces to the a file, because he simply doesn't have enough space, also because of this unfortunate uh, knight on b7. So white can now slowly, slowly improve his position along the a file, and once he's ready, he will uncork the a file and just try to penetrate. Now black went knight d8, bishop c2, knight c7, rook e a1. Uh, so you can see that white is improving along the a file, bishop e7, now a very nice move, bishop b1, trying to uh, create some connection between the queen and the rook, bishop e8. And now, um, probably, Karpo was trying to find some direct way how to penetrate along the queen side, but he couldn't find any, because, um, in a way, uh, Unziker made a lot of preparational moves there. For example, he has uh, brought the knight to c7, from where it covers a8. And therefore, um, uh, Karpo starts to play on the other flank, so um, he's now playing on the backhand side of, of Un Unziker. He went knight d2, knight d8, knight h2, and prepared f4, bishop g7. Now white went f4. And black played a very, very ugly move. He played f6 here. But I can understand that because after e takes f4, black is really not prepared to do that. Um, for example, I don't know, I can take with the queen. And now this e2 knight comes sooner or later to, to a very important square d4, and black doesn't have such a nice square for his knights available. Okay, here's knight d5, so perhaps I should take with the knight. But anyway, the... the um, the uh, bishop will come to d4 sooner or later, and and then and all this f3 knight will come to d4. So basically, um, this structure is not as good uh, for black as it would be if there was a knight on 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 e5. So therefore, black decided to be stubborn and play f6, and white uh, took the 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 space he was given, g5, and. Uh, Possibly Unziker hoped that the clo close character of the position will save him here, but Karpo shows that the, the space advantage of white is much more important. He went bishop c2, and this bishop uh, is heading to h5 to get exchange for the e8 bishop, after which the, the light squares in black's camp will be very weak. Bishop f7, knight g3, knight b7, bishop d1, h6. This is, this is a, seems like a irrelevant move, but in fact it's quite a big mistake because the g6 square, which is a white square, will be very weak very soon, as we will see. Now white went bishop h5, queen e8, queen d1, knight d8. And again, it seems that um, 
somehow White's um, initiative um, has come to some standstill because Black is not uh, letting him to, to break through this diagonal. H4 is not yet to be prepared. But um, Carpo uses another um, important strategical rule. When you are having a space advantage, you can really play slowly. Because your opponent in his small home, in his small, small position, will not uh, be able to make any um, use of, of, of the time he is given. So white played slowly, rook a3, king f8, rook a2, king g8, and um, basically white has improved a lot because sometimes he can go queen a1 and just try to penetrate along the a file. And now, as you can see, black went king f8, king g8 because he was probably short of on on short, short on time and also he has not much to do. And now white went a nice move, knight g4. Here yeah, there's an important um, tactical resource that you cannot take on h5 because of knight f6. You surely had seen that. And white takes on h5. So it goes knight, g, knight, knight g4. After king f8, white went knight d3, king g8. And now after improving the position of rooks and also after transferring the, the passive knight on h2 to a more active Square white is prepared to go for some intrusion, so he took on f7, knight takes, and with queen h5, bishop uh, knight d8, and queen g6. So you can see that that the, if there was a pawn on h7, this wasn't be possible. But black was over prophylactic. He played h6 in order to cover the g5 square, and he lost the g6 square as a result. Uh, black went king f8. And after knight h5, he gave up. This might seem premature, but because he like nominally um, is still equal on material and and so, but in fact his his pieces are so terrible that I can I can understand that he that he did this. Um, basically, um, basically after for example queen takes g6, f takes g6, then second knight comes to comes to f5, so for example knight e8, knight f5, rook c7, and white has lost, uh, has won the battle on the on the king side, and now he will win it also on the queen side. For example, queen takes a uh, rook takes a3, rook takes f3, a3, rook c8, and rook a7. And this is probably a very nice uh, illustration on how successful Karpov's strategy was because black is losing the g7 bishop uh, and all his pieces are just driven to very very passive positions. So basically uh, you should remember several things from this video. The first is that once you have the space advantage in a closed position you can play slowly because you can use the time uh, better than your opponent which is cramped. The second thing is that um, you should you should try to play on um, both lengths, trying to make use of the mobility of your pieces. And maybe the third thing to remember is that uh, most of the positions which seem to be very blocked can be um, opened um, um, in one way or another. So usually it's a very bad strategy to just try to block the like to go for a bad position hoping that it is very blocked. Usually this strategy doesn't work. You will maybe uh, make a draw in one out of three games and lose the second two, which gives you a very, very bad score, of course. So that's, that's all for this moment, and I'm looking forward to meet you again at Royal Chess. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.